Good morning, you guys. How y'all doing? It's Monday morning. We made it through the weekend. We on top of the grass instead of underneath it. You got another opportunity to get things right, to do something that glorifies the kingdom. Thank you for God's grace and mercy. Mm. We on what day 26? We got four more days. You made it. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of everybody that made it all the way through. Super excited. I'm ready to eat some stuff. <laughs> My boyfriend like, watch. Once you get off this fast, you ain't gonna even want, want to eat that stuff. It ain't gonna even taste good to you. Yes, it is. <laughs> I can't wait to sink my teeth into some ice cream, some chips, some candy. I'm a, I'm a junk food eater. I know it's horrible for you. It is. But I do. I miss it. <laughs> you know, I was telling him the other day, I'm like, I wish we would have ate stuff um, in its natural state um, so that this stuff wouldn't taste so disgusting to us now. <laughs> we wouldn't have nothing co to compare it to. We would just like this... Uh, the regular taste of things uh good morning tower good morning walter um just like you know some people will eat like tuna right out of the package disgusting <laughs> i think that's so disgusting you don't put no mayonnaise no onions no mustard no nothing on it you just eat it straight out the package put it on a salad like that's disgusting to me but other people who's used to eating it in its natural state you have no problem doing that that's that's the healthiest way to eat it but anyways so anyways, you guys made it. It's day 26. We got four more days to go. It's almost over. Pat yourself on the back. Um, give yourself a round of applause. But still give honor to God because he's the one that gave you the strength to make it this far. You didn't do this on your own. Regardless of what you want to think about it, you, you didn't do it on your own. You had help. God gave you strength and grace and mercy to make it through this. Um, and I'm, th I'm so thankful that he did because I had so many people um, that gave up along the way um, or was like, this is as far as I can go. But God gave me strength and grace to make it through um, the full 30 days. Um, and that's, that, that's part of what I wanted to talk about, too. Like, no matter, that was my whole thing. That's a great segue into what God was talking to me about this morning. Um, no matter how much good you do, no matter how many people lives you touch, no matter how much, how righteous you think you are, there are still going to be people that's going to hate you. There are still going to be people that don't, dis that dislike you. There are still going to be people that's going to lie on you. God says they hated me first. And that's exactly where our scripture is today. Our scripture is going to be John 15, I think it's 18, John 15, 18 through 18 through 19. So that's, um, Walter, if you can put that up for me, it's going to be John um, 15, 18 through 19. And he talks about how they hated him first. So what makes you think that they're not going to hate you? What makes you think that they're not going to lie on you? No matter what you do, no matter how much good you do, Jesus sinned not at all. He had no sin within him. And they still found a reason to hate him. They still found a reason to lie on him. They still found a reason to nail him to that cross. They still found a reason to crucify him. So they're going to find reasons to hate you. And still, we are to love on our enemies. Still, we are to look past their flaws. That's one of the things the pastor talked about this weekend. It's so easy for us to love on the people that we don't know. And I never could understand that because I have a lot of family members who um, they, they show much greater love to strangers. You know, they'll, they'll treat they str the strangers or their friends better than they treat their family and I'm like I don't understand that we family we've been there no matter what but you're you're take care of your your so-called friend 
you know, and I, I never understood that, but the, the pastor explained that to me this weekend is that they don't know they flaws. They don't know they mess. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I'm so used to going this way. Um, and we know, I know I'm gonna take you back there. But yeah, so we, you don't know their flaws, right? You don't know their mess. So it's easy to love on them. The people that are closest to you, your friends, or I mean, not your friends, your family, who who know all of your mess and you know all of theirs. Your, this is this is truly a love walk. This tells you how immature in love you are. If they're your family, you you stop loving them. You you find a reason to be flawed in the love that you give them because they've they've shown you their mess. They've shown you who they are. But a stranger, you'll love on him to the end of the earth because you haven't seen their mess. Not even realizing that that stranger could have a knife behind his back too. Not even realizing that they could be, you know, having an ulterior motive behind what they're doing too. You know, they'll be talking about like, um, well, I've been there for you. You know, I'll always be there for you. Why? Is, is their motive is their intentions really of the heart or if they really have a reason why they always there for you is it is it because you got something they need is it because you you're providing something for them like check people's intentions check the reason and check yourself as to the love that you have for people you know the same love that you have for a stranger you should have for your family you know um and 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 like i said the whole reason for me going on here was god was really talking to me about um not getting upset about what people say about you the lies that people say about you because they lied on me jesus kept saying they lied on me they they crucified me and i had no sin so you know that they're going to find flaw in you you know that they're going to try to put you down you know that they're going to try to take you away um from the path that you're going on it just really upset me because somebody did say something about me this weekend that was a total lie and I was just like, oh, why would they go and lie on me like that? Like, I, I would never do such a thing. But God was like, they, they crucified me too. So, you know, brush it off. Let it go. Have a great day, baby. I love you. Uh, you're knocking all my stuff out. It's all attached to you. Come back. Come back. No. You're going to rip your jig? Oh, you got it. All right. Have a great day. Um, so yeah, so that's, um, what he was talking to me about because I just, it really kind of hurt my soul that I am doing all of these things, you know, to make sure I'm living a righteous life, to make sure I'm doing, I'm being good to people, to make sure that I'm loving on people. God really, I mean, um, the pastor really checked me yesterday when he was like, the love that we show strangers is different than the ones we show our family because we see their mess. And I'm like, man, am I, God, am I doing that? You know, when something hits you, that's that's a sign that that's something you may be doing. And, and I didn't realize I was doing that. And I didn't realize that I was that immature in love, that I really was not loving people correctly. You know, I really thought that I was, you know. Um, but so I, I checked myself on that. Like, Lord, help me to love according to your will to love according to your desire um and that's that's another thing too when we're taking this walk um there's a scripture that talks about god will give us the desire of our heart so many people think that the desire means that he's going to give us whatever we want if that's what we desire once you take this walk your desires should change the desires that you have should align with god's that's why he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart, because he knows that now that you're taking this walk, that desire should match mine. You should want what God desires for you. You should want or desire the things that God has for you because you know that he has what's best for you. So a lot of people take that whole scripture and just say, OK, God going to give me whatever I want because it's the desire of my heart. No, you totally misread that. God, God means that your desires, once you decide to take this walk it should align with my will for your life it should align with the desires that i have for you um and you should be asking god what are your desires what what are the things that you want for me to have because i don't want anything that you don't want for me 
you know, I, these are the things that I would like to have, but does it align with what you want me to have? Is this what you desire for me? You know, pe people read that scripture totally different. It's funny how people will um, interpret scriptures to align with what they want. <laughs> to, you know, you'll keep, I want this relationship. I want this. God is like, no, I don't want that for you. But this is what I desire. You said in your word, this is what I desire. No, that's not what I want for you. I desire good things for you. Your heart should align with mine. I want you to have the, the best things. I want you to have the, the what's best for you. Not just any relationship. This is not the relationship I want for you. And you, you keep, oh, but this is what I want. Okay, now you're going to end up in mess. Now you're going to end up in mess because you, your heart doesn't match his. Good morning, Mahogany, or Shelby, good morning. Um, yeah, but, so, like I said, God was dealing with me this weekend about not, not allowing what people say um, to change or alter my mood or to, to take on what they say about me. Um, one of the things I was watching yesterday, um, which kept me up all night, was the help. And when the lady was saying to the, the little girl, she kept saying, y'all know y'all know this meme, um, you was good, um, you was important. You know, she was saying that to her. And those type of, um, what are those called? Uh, affirmations are good to repeat to yourself. Um, because you, especially when you have people that will try and tear you down, that will try and speak against God, that will lie on you. Um, again, the scripture we read is John um, 15, um, 19 through 20. Um, and Jesus just kept reminding me, God was reminding me that they crucified my son first. They crucified me first. They didn't like me first. They hated me first. And I was without sin. So why do you not think that they're going to talk about you, that they're going to lie on you? That no, Like I said, no matter what good you do, no matter how much good you do for people, or maybe even for the person that is lying on, on you, no matter how much you do for them, they can find a reason to hate on you. And understand that it's not them. No, it's not them. It, 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 this is a spirit that is operating within them. And you, you just, that's why God tells us love on your enemies, love on them, pray for them because they don't, maybe they don't even know that that's, that's a spirit. Maybe they just think that this is just me. This is just who I am. This is how I respond. That nobody hasn't really told them, you know, um, who God is and, uh, and, or maybe they know who God is, but they haven't had a experience with God. Once you have that experience with God, there's no way that you're going to continue to walk the way um, that you do in an evil manner. Or you're going to attack ch the children of God. There's no way that you're going to do that. Um, and all I can do is just pray. You know, that's the only thing I could do is just like, God, I don't understand why these people would lie on me. I don't understand why would they attack me in this manner, um, especially when this situation could have caused for me to respond in that way or to react in the way that they lied about that I did. Um, but I didn't because of the God in me. I didn't respond in that way because of the God in me. But yet and still, the enemy found a way to attack me, you know, to, resp to respond in a way as if I did commit that act. Um, and it kind of it, it kind of upset me a little bit. It kind of made me mad that this person or would go and lie on me like that, would say such a thing about me that will ruin my character, you know. And then it, it, it hurt me even more that the person that I loved didn't defend me in that didn't say no she wouldn't do nothing like that you know she that's not of her you know that I, I know her she wouldn't do that they they didn't defend me that hurted me even more but I, I as I was talking to God this morning I God was just like why just forget about it like <laughs> you in a better place than them anyway you know you you don't worry about that you know just just pray for them because they're the reason that they're lashing out like that is because of their they don't know no better they have no clue. Bye, baby. Have a good day. I love you. You still sleeping? Um, 
Mahogany says, good morning, beautiful. Oh my God, it was meant for me to tune in. <laughs> you said yes. Oh my God, that was that was my weekend. Man, I <laughs> Mahogany, I, I just don't understand. Like, well, I do. I get it, you know, because God has already revealed to me the truth. You know, that we're not fighting flesh and blood. That, Like I said, they're going to find a reason to hate you. They're going to find a reason to go against whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, that's why you cannot be doing this walk for the love of people or for, because you want to receive love from people. Because you're going to find yourself disappointed over and over and over and over and over. Like, it's never going to stop over and over and over. They're going to constantly disappoint you. They're going to constantly... Um, by they're going to constantly um let you down because that's people so you cannot be taking this walk because you're seeking the attention of people you cannot take this walk because you're uh, seeking the love of people because they're going to hate you they're going to hate you jesus lets you know they hated me first they are going to hate you um so do not be taking this walk because you want to seek attention or love from people you know because you're not going to get it you have to be taking this walk. You have to be doing this thing because of the love that you have for God, the love that you have for the God that you serve, for his son. This is the reason why you want to be a doer because your blessings don't come from people. Your blessings come from the father. He is the one that has everything, who can take care of you. Um, he is the one that even can send people to help you. One of the things God promises is that he will make a dinner, a, he will prepare a meal for you in the front of your enemies. So that is why it is very good for you to pray for your enemies. Pray for them because God is going to make sure that he gets those people that, you know, came against you. Um, I remember one, I think I talked about this before, one part in the scripture where um, David was in the street um, worshiping and praising God. He praised him so well that he came out his clothes, right? He came out his clothes. There was a lady that saw this and she talk so bad about um david god cursed her so don't don't god said let him fight your battles you know and even when this person lied on me i didn't even say nothing to him i didn't even respond i just took it to god i said god now you know this person is lying on me <laughs> you you know this is not me you know this is not my character and it, the old me would have been like what you know, I would have been snapping. Like, are you for real? Like, you really finna sit there and lie on me? Like, whatever. You know, I would have been snapping. But I was like, Lord, you know that's not my character. You you know that's not me. You know, help reveal the truth to them. And even if you don't ever reveal the truth, help me to be a better person. Whereas I don't respond or react to the, um, the attack of the enemy. That I leave that up to the Lord to do. I leave that up to you, Father that you fight my battles. That's one thing he's he's always told me that he is going to fight my battles. There's no need for me to sit here and fight and scar and, and go back and forth and argue with the enemy because nine times out of 10, if I go and do what they're doing, now I'm no better than them. Now I've stooped to their level. That's one thing I've always told my kids, don't ever let nobody, um, don't ever let nobody else tilt your crown. And what I mean by that is don't let nobody take you out of your character. Don't let nobody do make you do something or respond to something that is beneath you. Because if you do, now you're on the same level as them. Now you're stupid to their level and you're no better than them. And, and we are. We are children of God. We choose to take the higher road, not the lower one. Um, Walter says, um, what's the old saying? <laughs> Why cry over spilled milk? Yeah. And then God said, you shall not touch my anointed one. Praise God. Praise God. And know that. Understand that. You know, he, he's going to definitely stand in, um, in, in your defense. He's going to take up um, for those who are anointed by him. Um, and he said, many, many are called, but few are chosen. That, that, just, that doesn't mean that God is like, okay, I'm not going to choose you. You know, that means that you didn't answer the call. That's what it means by few are chosen. Few are going to answer the call. He's, he, God calls everybody. He, he calls everybody. He, he doesn't pick out one or another or, no, I'm not going to call this one. That's not what that scripture means. He's going to call everybody. But only a few of us is going to respond and answer. 
that the pastor talked about that one too. If y'all want to go to um, First Samuel, you know where Samuel kept asking, and this is so funny. I was telling the pastor yesterday too. Is my my son did the same thing to me. He and, and this is how I know my son is gifted. My son, he, God has a plan for him. I don't know if he's gonna be a minister or not, but the pastor told me that he was yesterday. Um, but I I knew that from the time I had him that there was a calling on his life. Um, he he kept running downstairs mind that you call me he would always do that mind that you call me and I was like no baby that's not me if you hear um someone calling your name and you come down here and I tell you that it wasn't me go up there and tell God okay I'm listening that's God calling you and, and as the minister was talking about this yesterday my son was looking at me like what <laughs> you know like ma you was right you know and I, I told the pastor, I just want to tell him, I want to thank you for confirmation. You confirmed to my son the things that I was teaching him and telling him. Um, and I, and he also confirmed it to me, too, that I am telling God, I am telling my son right, that I knew that it was a calling on him. I knew that he had a purpose. You know, um, it was the, the enemy tried to attack him from the womb, from the womb. Like he was supposed to be a twin. I miss they I miscarried. Um, and then. I decided that's what got me really back to Milwaukee. I had miscarried, right? Um, and so then I decided to come and visit my mom when I was living in Atlanta. I decided to come visit her because I was depressed from that. Like, I'm like, okay, I just lost my baby. Um, let me go home and, you know, lay out with my mom. And when I got here, you know, a couple, a week or two go by and I'm like, I'm calling their dad and I'm like, hey, something don't feel right i still feel pregnant and he he's like no nah, they said you miscarried i'm like no nah, some some ain't right you know i still feel pregnant it was just you know i don't know what it was i wasn't even that far along i think i was only like two months and i still was like no i still feel pregnant like i feel him in me or something in me like um and the, the lady had told me I passed it, you know, that I had, you know, it was done. It was over with or whatever. So I said, okay, I'm going back to the doctor. So I went to the doctor and the, and the doctor said, sure enough, you still are pregnant. And she explained to me that my numbers were so high, you know, when they took my blood, that my numbers were so high that she believes that there was a twin and I lost one. So the enemy tried to kill him in the womb. But see, he missed one. See, the enemy don't know everything. He, he, he can attempt, but he, he, mm -mm. and I never understood. I'm like, God, why would you take one child and leave the other? You know, and, and it really, uh, it really um, dawned on me the other day. It was like, okay, now I get it. You know, so he, the enemy thought he killed Jonas. He, he thought he killed him in the womb. He thought he was done, you know, but, <laughs> but God. So then when I went to have him, they were like, he's breached you know we gotta we, he's gotta turn around and so they started was like okay well this they start trying to prep me you know or trying to help turn him around but he wasn't turning around so it's like okay we're gonna have to do a c-section I, I told my mama i said mama stop praying because i don't want them cutting on me so me and my mama we praying so they prepping me as they prepping me getting ready to cut on me they thinking they getting ready to do <laughs> what they came to do they cut, they get, they got all, they got me in surgery. They got the, um, they about to put the, um, the stuff on me to, you know, to stop me. So I won't feel the pain of being cut all that. They getting ready to do all of that. And I, the, before the doctor got to that point, I said, doctor, can you check one more time? Sure enough, he checked and my baby had turned. He said, okay, you can push. So you can't tell me that first of all, prayer doesn't work. And second of all, you can't tell me that God does not work miracles, that he's still not in the work and that he's still not in the midst of us still doing miracles. Um, it's just and that further lets me know the calling on my son's life. And when he was born, I looked at him. I said, you've been here before. You know, you got you got something to do. You know, it's just it's amazing how just as a mother, you can know and, and, and understand which child is which and what's what's in store for them you know even my daughter i told her i'm like you you letting the enemy take over your mind and he's going to attack you because you have a calling on your life there's something god needs for you to do i told her my daughter was born with an angel's kiss i said somebody's missing you in heaven they kissed you before you left to make sure that you covered because they knew the enemy was going to attack you they knew the enemy was going to see what god had planned for you 
But anyways, I went into all of that just, you know, just so you guys can understand that the enemy is going to attack. Don't respond to um, how the world responds. Don't react to how the world reacts. React according to how God commands your heart to react. You know, pray for those people that are speaking against you or coming against you. Pray for them. God have mercy on them because he's going to get them. He's going to um, have his revenge. He, he's going to do those things, but you want to pray that he has mercy on them. And then keep in mind too, sometimes God will elevate your enemies. He will do that. One, to kill the pride in you. And two, because God doesn't have a respect to a person, you don't know what that person went through. You don't know what they paid to get to that point. Just because they are speaking against you or they're talking about you or they're coming against you doesn't mean that God still doesn't have a purpose for them, that God still doesn't have a calling for them. Just pray and ask God to give you guidance, you know, to help you understand uh, what it is he's doing. One of the things that I sung that I love and things that I pray about too, God, whatever it is that you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Include me in your plan. Don't leave me in the dark. Bring the light to me. Allow me to see the truth. Not just facts. I want the truth because God is truth. This is what I want. I want the truth. So I'll go ahead and do a prayer. Um, let me pray for y'all. So our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory. Father, we thank you first for forgiving us of our sins, Father God. We, we must repent of those sins, Father God, so that you can hear our prayers. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Re forgive us of anything that we may have done against your children, Lord God. Forgive us of anything we may have done against you, Father God. Place those sins into the lake of forgetfulness, never again and bringing it to your attention or mine. Father, give us a heart that matches yours, Lord. Set in us the desires that you have for us, Lord God, so that our heart matches yours, Father God. Father God, help us to be able to respond in a way that pleases you, Lord God, to be able to walk according to the way that you ordained us to walk, Father God. Father, even our steps are ordered, Lord God. You spoke in your word that even every step, every hair on our head, everything that we ever go through was ordered. It was ordained. It wasn't by mistake. It wasn't by accident, Father God. Help us, Lord, in these um, situations where people may attack us, may come against us. Help us to learn how to use that too as we walk in this kingdom help give us strength lord god to be able to be still when we are to be still to be able to hear your voice when we are to hear your voice lord god help us to be servants of you and to be uh, and to know how to respond when you call on us father god father we thank you this morning for having a purpose for our lives, for having a, um, a, a, a destination and a purpose for each one of us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We pray for our enemies. We pray for anybody that may come up against us. We have spoken. We um, speak against any words that were spoken against us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you. We decree and declare that none of those words will prosper. None of those things that spoke that were spoken against us will prosper. No plan of the enemy of attack will prosper, Lord God. We speak against these things, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Father. I thank you, Lord, for just being the most amazing God that you are, that you didn't leave us out of your plan. You didn't leave us out of whatever it is that you're doing in this season. I thank you for including us. Everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, Lord God, call them, Lord God. They heard your call and they are answering you. They are standing in a position ready to serve you, Lord God. Lord God, put them in position. Use them according to your will and your way. Their vessels are open for you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for touching their families. Thank you for touching their, their enemies, Father God. Let nothing come against them. Let nothing come up against them, Lord God, right now, God, in the name of Jesus. 
Father God, if there's any plan of the enemy right now, we ask that you rebuke it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask these prayers and blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. So, you guys, I'm running just a little late, so I'm going to go and get out of here. I love y'all. It's nothing you can do about it, so accept it and move on. God loves you more. So, please, you guys, please try to love people um, according to the love of God and not get your emotions and your feelings caught up in it. You know, don't rely on how you feel about a thing. Don't rely on how you... Um, how, your own perspective lord take me out of it that's what you pray to lord take me out of it what would you do in this situation how am i to respond according to your will and your way um according to your your love lord give me the desires that you want me to have you know that's what we were talking about today so it's going to be um john's 15 um i think it was uh 18 through 19 um and it just talks about how they they hated him first so expect expect someone to speak against you to lie on you expect those things but now you have to um, talk to yourself and how you should respond to that you know to not respond the way the world does but the way god does so again i love y'all there's nothing you could do about it have a happy monday we are on day 26 we got four more days to go you've almost made it don't give up now the um the the victory is yours keep on pushing you guys have an amazing day bye